Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinster, and today we're going to look at something that is a bit complicated, that is the optimal binary search tree. Now, this isn't very important to learn, but, you know, I thought I'd cover this anyway, because even I was having a bit of difficulty understanding it at first. So, what is an opti optimal binary search tree? So, in computer science, an optimal binary search tree is a binary search tree which provides the smallest possible search time or expected search time for a given sequence of accesses okay so what this means that is if you have a binary search tree and you want to basically convert it into an optimal binary search tree, you can't do it it is a static binary search tree, which means that you have to statically make it which means that once it's made you cannot change it okay so what you do is you have a bunch of elements and you have the probabilities in which they're going to appear inside the binary search tree. That is the optimal binary search tree. So you create it in such a way that the probabilities are satisfied. Okay, the probabilities must be satisfied. And basically you also have the probability failures in which cases the, the, the nodes would not be hit. So there's a probability hit and there's a probability failure. So the optimal binary search tree basically optimizes the search is based on the probabilities okay so basically you just have to understand that it's based on the probabilities better searches equal more hits okay so let's start with what our node looks like so first the class node string data node right node left just the pointers and node string data this dot data equal to data you want to assign it to itself and yeah that's about it for the node now after the class declaration i want to declare this static final int max equal to six we're not going to change the value of this this is a maximum it's m a x capitals max static string words a string of words named words okay now public static void main string args float probability hit equal to new float max now this is a probability hit float array in which we're going to store the, the the probabilities of the elements that are hit based on their indexes okay the probability failure new float max this in this uh, array we're going to store the failure probabilities of the nodes which are not hit uh, we're going to declare a node root null and this is what we're going to use to store our entire binary search tree because we usually start from the root and words equal to new string max i'm initializing the words array over here okay now i'm going to declare the number of words there are four words which we're going to deal with the words basically are words one do words two if words three read and words four while now these words are going to be arranged in the binary tree Okay, now we are not going to deal with int data, we're going to deal with strings. And uh, yeah, well, that's probably it. And the fact is that um, uh, normally the array start from 0 to 4, but here I want to be a bit simple, and uh, therefore I don't want to be confused with 0. So let's start with 1, 2, 3, and 4, because there are 4 words. We're going to do 1 for do, w2 for if, w3 for read, w4 for while. And the probabilities, the p's, the probability hit of the do is 1, probability hit for the if is 3, probability hit for the read is 1, and for the while is 3, basically. And the probability failures, now the probability failures are basically 5, and this is because um, when you create a binary search tree, there are two nodes which are going to be pointing away from it. So you have, you, you, whenever you have a hit, you're always going to have failures which are 1 plus the hits. Because there are, if, if there are 4 nodes, there are going to be remaining 5 nodes. If you can draw um, a binary search tree like that, you, you, get it, the, you get the idea. But I can't show you right now because I, I don't have the graphic. It's okay. You'll get it. Just, just take a piece of paper and draw about you know, that amount of nodes which we just discussed. And you'll probably understand why it's 5 and not four so then we're gonna call this a uh, function which is called the optimal probability hit probability failure and number of words these are the parameters passed in it and optimal is basically what i named it it's not a big deal probability hit is the parameter first the first parameter 
uh, probability failure is the second parameter and the number of words that is four so basically this is going to be this array the one which I discussed previously probability failure is going to be this array and number of words is going to be the number of words that is four and then the, we're going to pre-order this is basically the main right so we're going to pre-order and which is going to print it in a pre-ordered fashion like you know I'll show you that the next slide is the pre-order function so this is the pre-order function I need I don't need to tell you this again and again I guess this is pretty simple if temp is not equal to null system dot out dot print temp data is something plus spaces or you can have new lines or tabs or whatever I just put a space it's simpler and then we're gonna call it recursively okay next public static node optimal now this is going to return a node that is the root okay it's going to return the root and uh, the parameters are float probability hit that is the first array the float probability failure array and the int words that is four I'm going to declare a node root equal to null float um, a, a, a two-dimensional array that is C float max max W and R these are three two-dimensional arrays which are going to help us in finding the optimal binary search tree configurations of uh, now we're, I'm gonna go through a loop that is int I equal to zero I less than equal to number of words I plus plus that's I equal to four I equal to zero I should be less than equal to four that is zero one two three and four so it goes through the loop five times then you have int J equal to zero J is less than number of words same thing zero one two three four five times so basically they're gonna go ten times each other five five are oh sorry 25 times whatever so C I comma J equal to W I comma J equal to R I comma J equal to zero so we have this basic loop is basically for um, initializing all of the uh, bi-dimensional arrays which we uh, declared above to zero obviously it's not necessary because Java does it itself but I thought that it was uh, I like to be particular in these kind of things okay so for in i equal to uh, one i is less than number of words i plus plus now this is a bit interesting see what i'm doing is i'm taking w i i now let's just look at it in uh, the for loop sense i is equal to one and i is less than equal number of words which means i will go from one to four one two three and four so which means that w1 ii is going to be w11 w22 w33 w44 and similarly over here initially if i equal to 1 probability failure i minus 1 that is 0 1 minus 1 is 0 probability failure of 0 plus probability failure of 1 plus probability hit of 1 okay so which means that is going to be 0 1 and 1 probability hit okay w22 will be equal to probability failure of 1 plus probability failure of 2 plus probability fail hit of 2 you get the pattern here right there's a pattern the first two then the next two then the next two the next two, next two until you're done so that's what w11 w22 w33 w44 are going to be this is the method okay there is a method if you search online you will probably get a method of you know the algorithm of solving it this is the code I'll send a link in the description if I find one to that particular page. Okay, then you assign the values of W11 to C11. And then R11 is going to be equal to I. Now, R11 is our basically the, our answer. We're going to convert R11 into our answer in the ne next function. So, you just this is just something we need to find in order to get to the answer. So, let's just assign W11 to C11 and R11 is equal to 1 which means R11 will be 1, R22 will be 2, R33 will be 3 and R44 will be 4. Keep in mind we are going from 1 to 4 W11, WC11 and R11. Okay. Next, uh, find an optimal tree with n nodes starting with the tree with two nodes and then increasing it by one in each iteration. And what does that mean? So this is basically a for loop, step equal to 2, step is less than number of words, number of words is 4, so we go from 2, 3 and 4, that is 3 loops. Find an optimal tree with step number of nodes, 
for i equal to 1, i less than number of words minus step plus 1. Now, what is step? i equal to 1, i is less than number of words. Number of words is 4, step is initially 2, so 4 minus 2 plus 1. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So i goes from 1 to 3. 1, 2, 3. 3 loops and then step will be incremented to 3 then you have number of words minus this is 4 minus 3 plus 1 that is 2 1 2 and similarly you, you get what I'm saying right so why do why are we doing this you'll know okay int j equal to i plus step minus 1 now what is i i is initially 1 let's take it initially 1 step is initially 2 and basically one so one one gets cancelled two j is two so w one comma two is equal to w one comma one we we found what one comma one was initially plus probability hit of two plus probability failure of two so we know this value this value is always going to be the same and if this value is not, not the same the function is not satisfied so w one comma one is going to be there we are you're going to have this value it's, it's going to be zero, but but most of the time you're going to find this value. So plus probably hit of J plus probably failure of J. Now find C I comma J by selecting the minimum. Now why are we finding the minimum? You want to find the minimum because that is probably going to be the most optimal node to put over there in that particular state. So W I comma J, that is W one comma two will be equal to this value, which we will find later. So then we have to find the minimum of k the, the minimum which is k so find c i comma j no so i'll tell you one thing we're not finding the the minimum of i or j we find the minimum of the nodes of the values of the the hits between those nodes okay let me go and show you the find function so this is the find function over here we take two or uh, three arguments that is the float c that is a c array and uh, i and j so here we have the minimum value which is 999 now this min value is basically infinity you can consider it as infinity because you want to find the minimum of a particular value i i think we discussed um how to find the minimum in the sorting uh the, the sorting um lectures or you know tutorials l will give the index of the minimum element index we need to find the index of the minimum element and not the actual value of it. Uh, for int k equal to 1, k less than equal to j, k plus plus, j will uh, in initially, if we consider i is a 1 and j is 2. So i is k equal to 1 until 2. So 1 and 2. There are two values we should go through. So if c i comma c i k minus 1, that is uh, i is also 1 and k is 0. 1 comma 0 and this value that is k plus 2 comma j is less than minimum then uh, minimum will be equal to this value but then index will be equal to l index is k now k is what we need to return now we can't have k inside like outside the uh, the block because it's not a global variable or even like, it's local to this block right so we need something like l to hold this value when we need to return it that's all reasons for l we, we, we don't actually need l it's just a, it's just something to hold the value of k so that is it we find the minimum when we go through the whole loop and then we return l okay we return l now once we now l it, when returned will be equal to k over here in the in the optimal function and then we're going to see cij is equal to wyj plus ci k minus 1 plus c k and j so what is this basically i comma j is the, the 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 least amount which we found and we have to go through this now why because wij c i k minus 1 plus ckj now i told you that, that there is a method to solve this problem and if you don't understand this I, i'm sure most of you won't and even i didn't at first you have to go through the the pen and paper solving of this 
only then you will understand what this is. I'm showing you the code, but you probably have to do it with pen and paper and go through a few books. R I I J equal to K. Now this is actually our answer. This value over here is what our answer will look like. This is just formality, housekeeping stuff. But this is what our answer will look like. Now root equal to constructor. Construct R one number of words. Now where is this going? Then you return the root. You find this first. Okay, let's go to this function. Now in the construct node, we have int R I int j node node equal to null if r i comma j is equal to equal to zero return null okay if if it equals zero you don't have to do anything just return null because you know that it's over so node equal to new node words r comma j now words words is an array which contained the the words you know the, the do if while and the other one so words of this number so one two three and four either of them you know why we, we stored the values in r right the minimum values in r so r i comma j node dot left once this is done this node is created we point it node left construct the new node and it's going to recurse to this particular function again and go to the same loop and node right so i j r i j minus one r i j plus one that should be pretty obvious and then we turn the node and we're done so thanks for watching this I know this is a bit abstract but uh, I'll put a few screenshots of my book the page of my book which has this so you might understand it even more wholly um, yeah so thanks for watching uh, toodles and like share and subscribe if you found this useful if you didn't still like share and subscribe I just like it when somebody does that